you, Lord Jesus, to help us to have a revelation and an understanding and appreciation for the depths of what it means to our lives. Let our hearts receive this word. Give us revelation and understanding so that we could be thoroughly equipped and furnished for every good work. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. A young man named Taylor, he just graduated from engineering school, and he was on that first interview. And you know he was probably super excited. Uh, well, he, he's with Mr. Jones, and at the very end of this lengthy, intricate interview, Taylor is asked a question by Mr. Jones, the HR person. He says, so tell me, what kind of a starting salary are you looking for? And Taylor said, oh, something about 100 to 125,000, depends on the benefits package. So Mr. Jones said, well, what would you say to a package of five weeks vacation, 14 days of paid holidays, full medical and dental, company matching retirement funds, and a new car every two years? How about a BMW? And Taylor's eyes got wide, and, and he was sitting straight up in his chair, and he said, well, are you kidding? And Mr. Jones said, yeah, but you started it. <laughs> what had Taylor started? He started an interview with an unreal unrealistic expectation for his wages. He had a wage and benefit package in mind that he wanted, that he was asking for, but it was unrealistic because it didn't commensurate with his experience. And when Paul was writing the book of Romans, he wrote about wages. And I've been reading a different translation this year, and when I was reading chapter 6 this morning, there were some words that, uh, that just caught my attention. I'm going to read to you from the Living Bible, Romans chapter 6, 22 and 23. But now you are free from the power of sin and are slaves of God and his benefits to you include holiness and everlasting life. For the wages of sin is death, but the free gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. And the words benefits and wages just got me to thinking. And, and I know we started with this uh, kind of funny story about the guy with the unrealistic expectation for wages. But we can have an unrealistic expectation for our spiritual wages. As human beings and Christians, we're called to work. We know we're supposed to work. We have a responsibility to work. If we don't work, we're not supposed to expect to eat. We have been called into the labor fields of the Lord. But what was Paul talking about in Romans chapter 6? I wanted to know. So wages are something that you earn. People don't just give you wages without working for them. Wages are the fruit of your labor. And Romans makes it clear that there is not one person who is perfect and innocent in all of their ways. No one has ever perfectly followed God's path. That includes you and that includes me. Every one of us has turned away and every single one of us has done wrong. And the wage that we earn for our ways, and our ways are called sin when we're going our own way, <laughs> We don't like to talk about sin, but the Bible has a right and it has a wrong. And if it's a wrong, it's called a sin. And when we operate in our own way and when we, we do those works of sin, the wage that we earn for ourselves is death. So you and I, we've all sinned. And even if there was that one person among us who really was perfect, just think about it. So you know somebody, you know, almost, it's almost like Pastor Walker. He's pretty close, don't you think? I think he's, he's, I think he's pretty, pretty awesome guy. I know he, that he judges his words carefully. He judges his actions carefully. He weighs everything against the grace and the mercy of God. He's a just and a kind and a godly man, but he's not a perfect man. But even if there was such a person that really didn't make any sin in their life, there is this thing that we're born into. 
There's a sin that Adam and Eve committed. No matter how good you were yourself, you are born into sin. And you can't outgood yourself. You can't good yourself out of the sin price that you owe because you were born into humanity. There's a price to pay. And payday is coming. We're all going to stand before God one day, and we're going to have to give an account, and our lives are going to have to reconcile with the Word of God. How can we pay? This sounds pretty grim. This sounds pretty hopeless. How in the world can we pay what we owe to redeem our sin, our lives? Or how do we avoid being eternally separated from God? Well, it is a grim picture except for Jesus. Aren't you thankful for Jesus? There was absolutely no way that you could pay the penalty that you owe for your sin and obviously not the penalty that you would owe for the original sin that you were born into being a human being. Jesus Christ is our rescuer. Jesus Christ is our redeemer. He went to Calvary, that spotless lamb. He was perfect and he was sinless. He was God and he was man and he laid down his life he was carried into a tomb dead and lifeless and sealed up inside the grave. But the resurrection power of the Spirit of God went to work in that lifeless body and Jesus Christ rose again. And because he lives, we can live. Aren't you thankful that Jesus went to Calvary for you and for me? Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is the one that John the Revelator spoke of. Jesus is he that was dead but now lives. Jesus is the one that is alive forevermore. Amen. Jesus is the one that has the keys of hell and death. All of us have sinned and all of us have fallen short. But even so, now, because of Jesus, God declares those who trust in him not guilty. Aren't you thankful that when God looks at you and you've been buried in the waters of baptism, you've repented of your sins, God looks at you and he says, not guilty. Hallelujah. I was guilty. But that's not the way God sees me. And it's not the way that sees you. he sees you. He says, they're not guilty. God looks down upon you and he says, they're not guilty of offending me anymore because of what Jesus did. Wow. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we need to remember the goodness of God. We need to remember the benefits of God, of being His. In our text we read, Psalm 103, 1 through 2, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and forget not all his benefits. But what are his benefits? Well, let's just look at the next verse, verses 3 through 5. These are the benefits that we can bless the Lord for. He forgives my iniquities. Hallelujah. He heals my diseases. We bless the Lord because he redeems our life from destruction, and he crowns us with loving kindness and tender mercies. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Bless the Lord. He satisfies my mouth with good things. I've tasted a lot of stuff this world has to offer, but there's some good things I've tasted in the house of God, in the Word of God, and they satisfy me, and he renews my youth like an eagle. I can be all just plumb wore out, and I can come into the house of God and feel the Spirit of God, and I can be energized in the presence of God. Doesn't that make you want to bless the Lord? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we bless the Lord with our soul, that means with all our whole being. And I've been studying and talking to you some about worship today and when we worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness that's not just a little dance we do but it includes the dance it includes our life that we live with him 
our whole being, all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And we're called to bless him, and we're not supposed to forget his kindnesses. We've got to remember his gifts and his benefits. Romans 6.22 tells us some more of the benefits. We read that earlier. But now you are free from the power of sin and are slaves. He's talking about you're my servant now. Actually, one of the translations of that word, I love this, you are given to God. Huh. God came. Jesus came. Gave his life for you. You're redeemed by the blood of the Lamb, and now you're given back to God. Hallelujah. And his benefits to you include holiness and everlasting life. Through Jesus, you and I have been given a gift. It's a gracious benefit package. Hallelujah. I like the benefit package that God has for me. And I didn't even earn it. He said that we have, with the benefit package that he's given us, freedom from sin. Freedom from sin. Think about that. No more can sin enslave you. No more. You're free from that power. When we are free from sin, that means we can maintain that continual fellowship and communion with God. Sin breaks our fellowship and communion with God. But God says you don't have to have that in your life anymore because I've given you power over that. When we receive God's Spirit, we can live in unbroken fellowship with God. We can have purified lives, and we can receive eternal life. And you know eternal life includes today. <laughs> Think about that. Eternal life includes today today. And we aren't yet what we will be, but my God, aren't you thankful that God has offered us the power to live free from sin? I was just getting excited about this when I was reading this. The power of sin is broken in the life of every spirit-filled believer. Romans is a great book, and Paul was talking to the believers in Rome about the very real and ongoing battle that we have between our flesh and, we, and our spirit, and we have that. <laughs> Pastor was giving us some real practical application of some of that stuff in the first session. There is a very real battle against the flesh and the spirit, and sin does have power. But it doesn't have power in the life of a believer that is filled with the Holy Ghost it doesn't have to have power. Only any power that you or I give it. Because Jesus said that one of the benefits that he was given to us was power to be free from sin. Now, I'm no high roller in the business world. I'm no tycoon. Uh, but I do know that there are people that are in high levels in businesses and their benefits package outweigh their wages. <laughs> there are people who get dividends and profit sharing and benefits that they just get and they outweigh their wages. And yes, the wages that you earned and the wages that I earned, they are death. But I am here today to tell you about God's benefit package. And it doesn't come from the HR. It comes from the HG. It comes from the Holy Ghost. He has a benefits package. And the benefits that he is offering us outweighs the wages of sin. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm so thankful. It's a free gift. I can't even earn it. It's like my signing bonus. Oh, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. This is amazing, but it's a, it's a mystery. Paul said it was a mystery. In 1 Corinthians 15, beginning in 51, he said, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in a twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. Oh, and 
by the way, <laughs> that trumpet will sound. <laughs> That's what it says in here. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. Hallelujah. O oh, death, where is thy sting? O oh, grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved, be ye steadfast unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. If death is swallowed up in victory, the wages that you and I owe to it aren't due anymore. I want you to think about this. Just think about the bank that holds the note to your mortgage. <laughs> if that bank just uh, somehow just disappeared in a giant sinkhole and it wasn't there anymore, you wouldn't owe the money to them anymore. And when the Lord swallows up death in victory, we're not going to owe any wages anymore. Thank you, Jesus. It's not even going to have a sting I got a bite this week or something on my elbow. It's been itching me. But when we get to heaven, it's not even going to sting. Sin's not going to have any effect, no pull and no poison because God has given us the victory. So for here and for now, we got to be steadfast. We got to be unmovable. We got to keep on doing with great abundance the work of the Lord. And I'm here today to tell you that your labor is not in vain. You will have a full payment for your labor. But just what kind of labor? What kind of works? You might be wondering. Well, you're not alone. You're in good company. The disciples had the same question. And there is more than one kind of labor, but let's see what Jesus had to say. And if you look up these languages, words in the original languages, they're the same type of words. They have the same meanings. John 6, 28 and 29. Then said they unto him, what shall we do that we might work the works of God? You want to know if you're working the work of God? Do you want to know? Jesus answered and said unto them, this is the work of God, that ye believe on him whom he hath sent. There's no labor that you can do. There's nothing that you can perform. There's no sacrifice that you can give to earn the grace of God. It's all about having a relationship with Jesus. And yes, we're going to work, but this is the work. And nothing else we do matters if this work is not the foundation of everything that we do. Jesus said in Matthew eleven twenty eight, 28, Come unto me, all ye that labor. There's labor in this world. There's labor in the church if you don't know the grace and the liberty of the Spirit of God. You can try to labor your way to heaven. You can try to labor yourself into a situation where you can have peace because you got stuff built up. You've got your nest egg. You've got your security all laid out. There's labor. But Jesus said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. He's the answer to the weariness of the world. Rest for your soul. By grace, we're saved through faith. And this work, the work of believing on Jesus, hallelujah, that is the work that will bring you to eternal life. It's the only work that can bring you to eternal life. And it will give you rest because it frees your soul from sin. Hallelujah. 
And reality is this. We look at Paul's words in the Romans, and Paul said that, yes, we still live in bodies with sinful natures. Everybody, like Pastor was having everybody, raise your hand. You still deal with that. Raise your hand. You still deal with that. Raise your, I'm raising two hands. I still deal with that. Yes, we still live in bodies that have sinful natures, and we still wrestle with sin. But if you have the Holy Ghost living inside you, the Word of God says, I challenge you to read Romans 5, 6, 7, and 8. If you have any questions, questions about this. If you have the Holy Ghost, God says you have the power to be free from sin. Jesus died to end the power of sin. And we're supposed to look at our old nature. It's dead. It's been buried just like Jesus went to the grave. That part of me is dead. And now I'm alive to Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Sin breaks fellowship with God, and I just want to get so close to him. I don't ever want to not be in a place where I can't know that he's just as close as the mention of my name, of his name that he hears when I call. I don't want to have any broken fellowship with God. We don't have to sin. We can choose not to because he's given us that power. We don't have to obey that old master anymore. We got a new master. And it's not sin. It's righteousness and holiness. That's our new master. Romans 6.19 lets us know that we have power and we have the choice to take the power and use it. It's our decision. Read the verse. Will we let ourselves serve what's holy? Will we yield ourselves as servants of righteousness? It's your choice and it's mine. Moment to moment, day to day, choice by choice. Because the truth is I don't have any holiness on my own. I don't have any righteousness on my own. I've got to have the Holy Ghost. But when I do, I got His holiness and I've got His righteousness and I've got the benefits that he wants me to have. When we receive those benefits, they are not for our, from our labors. We receive the fruit of God's work. Think about that. You can't earn that. Oh, bless the Lord. Oh, my soul. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. There is not a one of us that's worthy to come into the presence of God. Every one of us is dependent on the mercy and grace of God, the blood of the Lamb. And God, I don't want to yield my members to the sinful deeds of the flesh that are like rotting fruits of death. God, I don't want to give myself to sin that's like a leprosy that's not ever going to get better on my own, on its own. It's going to make us unfit to be in the presence of God. But through Jesus Christ, the power of the life-giving Spirit, the power of the life-giving Spirit has freed us from the law of sin and death. Hallelujah. Satan has no access unless you give it to him. Satan has no foothold unless you give it to him. If you're submitted to God and you resist the devil, he's going to flee from you. He doesn't have a hold on you, and he doesn't have a hold on me because the blood is slippery. Hallelujah. And because the water, the fountain of the living waters, they keep me slippery. He can reach out and he can try to make his grab. But if I'm covered in the blood, if I'm staying in the fountain of the living waters, he can't get a hold on me. And he can't get a hold on you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. He can't control us. We have the ability to obey God's law because we're led by the Spirit. And we can pick up this book that's written in King James English and written in original languages originally so long ago and gone through translations and different cultures. And we can try to find our little sanctified loopholes. 
And we can try to make this say what we want it to say and, and give ourselves a little pass here and there. But when the Spirit of the living God is living inside of you, the law of truth, His will and His way is written in our hearts and He's given us the power not to sin and to know truly right from wrong. We can obey when we follow after the leading of the Spirit, because we have a new nature in us. Pastor opened today talking about the nature, the DNA. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yeah, we still have flesh, but I'm not obligated to serve it anymore. <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, I know. It comes and it begs me sometimes. Oh, please, 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 please. Like a key lime pie in the refrigerator. You can just hear it calling your name. Come to me. Sin does that to us. It begs us, come feed me. Come give me some attention. I'm feeling all lonely. I need you to take care of me. It makes its desires known. But because I've got the spirit of the living God in me, I've tasted something better. I've tasted something pure. I've tasted something lovely. I've tasted something wonderful that satisfies my soul, that sin can never satisfy your soul. It might give you a little bit of pleasure for the moment, but it will never satisfy your soul. So the question is, are we going to choose to live like the child of God that we are? And you're my brother, and you're my sister, and we are joint heirs with Christ. God chose you. God called you to himself. God declared you not guilty. He filled you with the goodness of his spirit. He brought you into right standing with him, and he's promised you his glory, and he's already given you a little down payment of that glory right now. And he says, you know how I want you to live? I want you to go from glory to glory. <laughs> glory. To, that's how I want to live. I want to go from glory to glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I know that we're going to face struggles. Jesus did, and we will too. But he said he's going to work it all out to our good, to those that are called according to his purpose. And the purpose that you were created for was to worship your Lord in the beauty of his holiness. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Forget not all his benefits. We've got to remember and rehearse the goodness of God. The writer of Hebrews said in chapter 10 and verse 35, Cast not away therefore your confidence, which hath great recompense of reward. Oh, don't lose your confidence, Faith Apostolic Church of Troy, because I'm here today to tell you that God has got one fine compensation package. He's got it all lined up, and you're not just some hourly employee. Oh, no, we know that story of the people. They came into work at different hours of the day, and they all got the same pay. We're not just hourly employees. We've got a benefit package that's greater than anything because we're the child of the sea. CEO. We're getting dividends. We're getting all the benefits. God is good. He's given us gifts. He's given us the spoils. We get fringe benefits. If all that isn't good enough, there's some fringe benefits. What's the fringe? It's just that little straggly piece on the end. But what's the fringe benefit? Is It's healing. What happened when the woman reached for the garment and just touched the fringe? We got a fringe benefit on top of salvation, on top of freedom from sin, on top of eternal life. We've got a promise of healing. God is so good. Thank you, Jesus. He promised to supply all our needs. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we want to worship you. We want to live our lives pleasing to you. We want to live our lives in unbroken communion 
and fellowship with you, the way that you made us to live. God, I thank you that you went to Calvary, that you went to the grave, and that you rose again in victory to free us from sin, to free us. You've got the keys of life, and you've got the keys of death and hell and the grave. And God, I just want to take a minute as we close out this service today and say, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, with all that is within me. Bless his holy name. I'm not going to forget your benefits. I'm going to proclaim your goodness in the assembly of the congregation. And I'm going to remind my brothers and my sisters to stand strong, to be steadfast and unmovable. Yes, we have a work to do, but the greatest work we can ever do is trust in Jesus, to walk closely with him, to hear his voice and the leading of his spirit. And it will guide us into all truth, and it will show us the way that we should take. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God, let us walk with confidence and let us not be weary. There is a great recompense, a reward. I thank you for your divine compensation package and everything that you've given to me and my brothers, my sisters, God. Thank you, Jesus. Would you like to stand and just thank the Lord before we leave this place today? Would you say it with me? Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. Bless his holy name. Oh, bless the Lord, oh, my soul. And forget not his benefits. God, we give you glory and honor and praise. And we thank you for this word. Help us to remember that we got to stay slippery with the living water. We got to keep ourselves in the fountain. And we've got to be, oh God, prepared never to give access to the enemy, never to entertain those whispers in the pulls of the flesh. This is a beautiful world, and pleasure isn't sin, but some sin is pleasureful. And God, you've got to give us the wisdom to know the difference. Help us to enjoy this beautiful life that you've given us, but help us, oh God, to live it rightly pleasing to you in righteousness and holiness that you might be glorified and that your spirit might not just puddle in our hearts, but move and flow to the world around us so they might experience the freedom from sin, salvation, and everlasting life. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for your attention. Have a beautiful, wonderful week. I bless you in the name of the Lord. Amen. And I just feel like we should end this service with these scriptures. Romans chapter 8, what shall we then say to these things? And here's what Paul answered. If God be for us, who can be against us? He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely give us all things? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? It is God that justifieth. Are you thankful that God is justifying you? Doesn't mean that we've done everything perfectly at all times, but His grace, where are you, Sister Lori? His grace allows Him to look at us just as if I'd, look at me just as if I'd never sinned. It is God that justifieth. Who is He that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again, who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. And then he says, nay. In all these things, we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. Turn to someone next to you and say, we're more than conquerors. Let's go forth as more than conquerors the rest of this week. He's with us. He's fighting for us. He's going before us. And his grace, wow. Could there be a better benefit package than that? None, none, none. God bless.